Hello everyone, Lawrence here with the single most exciting and perhaps single most important PC product launch in the last four years or so. Today we're looking at AMD's brand new Zen CPUs. Now I bought this one, the Ryzen 7 1700 non-X model. I will however be also comparing it to the 1700X and the 1800X. I'll be telling why you should and should not buy it because you've already seen all the marketing materials but who knows what all those fancy words are. Uh, I'll also be overclocking it using the stock cooler and some upgraded stuff. The 1700 is the most affordable Ryzen CPU that you can buy today. However, it still has eight cores, 16 threads. It has a base clock of three gigahertz. It can precision boost to 3.7. And in general, I really like how AMD releases the high-end stuff first, while Intel makes you wait for their high-end desktop platform. AMD is going to release their Ryzen 5 and 3 chips with hexa-cores and quad-cores later this year. The other Ryzen CPUs that you can buy today are the 1700X and the 1800X. Those are clocked at 3.4 and 3.6 gigahertz. They boost from 3.8 to 4 gigahertz. Now, I'm not going to talk about pricing because that varies greatly from region to region. So if you want to know the price for these CPUs, just go ahead and look at your local reseller or Amazon. The only really important thing with the price is that AMD claims to have the same performance as Intel at only half the price. So let's see if that is true. As far as I'm aware, all Ryzen 7 chips are the exact same die. However, the X models feature something called XFR or extended frequency range. This basically means that your CPU can clock itself and even overclock itself depending on power delivery and cooling performance. While this is an amazing feature to have if you're particularly lazy about overclocking, it's something most of us won't really need because we'll just overclock it ourselves. XFR is also why these X chips do not come with a stock cooler. The non-X model does come with the RAID Spire CPU cooler, which even has RGB lighting. The RAID cooler is genuinely good. It's a full aluminium heatsink with a copper core on the inside that contacts your CPU. It has a really nice thick fan and, as I mentioned, RGB lighting because it is 2017. For those wondering, you can rotate the fan shroud to make the AMD logo line up no matter what orientation your motherboard or your socket is in. This is what my testing setup looks like. You can see the entire build by clicking the card in the top right corner. I overclocked all eight cores to 3.8 gigahertz using just the stock RAID Spire cooler. And I got temperatures of 86 degrees Celsius on the core, which is as high as I wanted to go. Increasing clock speeds is as easy as just setting the multiplier and adding a little bit of voltage. You can increase this multiplier in 0.25 increments, which is great for doing some precision tuning to really get the most performance out of a certain voltage. To really push the 1700, I then switched my CPU cooler for a Noctua NHD 15. And this is where I became a little bit disappointed, but in a good way. You see, I talked to other reviewers and it seems like four gigahertz is about as high as a Ryzen CPU with eight cores will do on all eight cores at the moment. Mine got that four gigahertz at 1.415 volts which is basically as high as you want to go. You see, going any higher just creates excessive heat um, without really much of a performance increase and you're just adding ridiculous voltage to your chip. In the end, I ended up going with just 3.9 gigahertz at only 1.35 volts, which meant everything was super cool, incredibly quiet, but we're not really sacrificing any performance whatsoever. With my overclock, I nearly got 1700 points in Cinebench multi-threaded. Now I will run some other benchmarks over your screen right now. Um, there is a lot of talk about how it doesn't really perform well in just 1080p gaming. However, that's because, well, developers have just been focusing on Intel chips with two or four cores for the last five years. And so I'm really sure that in the future that performance deficit for AMD Ryzen 1080p gaming will improve as developers actually spend some time with these chips. So then why should you buy the 1700? Well, it's amazing. It's much cheaper than all the other SKUs out there. Plus it comes with a really good CPU cooler included, which the other more expensive models don't come with. Performance is on par with Intel's high-end desktop chips at half the price of the Intel chips. And once you start overclocking this thing, again, with the included cooler, no extra cost, performance is just amazing. However, if you're just a gamer, like you only play video games, you don't ever stream, you don't ever make videos, you don't ever export pictures or do anything that can take advantage of all those threads, perhaps you should go with an X model because that XFR will push two or three or four cores slightly further from four to maybe 4.4 gigahertz if you're lucky with the chip. 
Overall, I'm incredibly happy with my purchase and I really can't wait to do more Ryzen builds and just play around with these chips a bit more. Now with all this talk about performance, there has been some fuss about memory speeds with Ryzen. Basically, people got really used to those 3000 MHz speeds with their Intel chips, but Intel chips really need those 3000 MHz and they don't really care about latency. Ryzen is much more peculiar about latency and less about what speed you're running it at. So my advice to you guys would be to just buy 2133 sticks with like CL12, CL13, something like that. And that will give you amazing performance. Also about memory, and this gets me super excited and it should get you excited as well, especially if you're into ZFS or just storage servers or just basically really stable video encoding. Ryzen CPUs, no matter which one, they support ECC memory. And that is amazing because Intel doesn't do it and it's just a great way to be more stable no matter what you're doing. Now you saw my build, I did not go with ECC memory and the only reason is that my reseller didn't have any in stock and I wanted to be pretty quick with these videos. Now a third hot topic is the price of the X370 chipset and this is because a lot of people seem to forget that AMD positions the X370 chipset somewhere between Z270 and X99. And you can see that in the amount of PCI lanes and all that sort of stuff. However, if you don't need a couple of extra USB ports and you don't need to go with SLI or Crossfire, which I don't recommend ever going with anyway, something like the B350 chip will do exactly the same. And still you can overclock your chip with a B350 motherboard. So realistically, buy the X board if you really want to show off and you just want the best of the best. For anyone else, and if you're somewhat budget conscious, just go with a B350 motherboard. So to conclude, I'm super excited with my purchase. I saw a lot of you people are excited about it as well, especially looking at the comments in my videos. Um, overall, my purchasing advice is, if you only ever play video games, don't go Ryzen. Uh, if you do go Ryzen, get an X chip with XFR so you can overclock those two or three cores. If you do anything other than playing video games, like you're streaming, you're editing videos, if you're a YouTuber, for example, go ahead, get the 1700 and a cheap B350 motherboard, use the stock cooler to overclock it to 3.9 gigahertz and you'll be performing incredibly well for almost no money, especially when compared to Intel chips. Anyway guys, if you like this video, please press that like button. If you didn't, hit that subscribe button for when I make a video that you do like. And if you want more frequent updates, there's Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for that. You'll get gorgeous pictures of CPUs and CPU coolers. If you want to really support this channel, there's a Patreon page for that. For now, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.